be chilling outside the gym right now. Just uh, I want to do the intro on my car. But yeah, today we're hitting some shoulders and maybe some triceps and maybe some abs. So we're just going to see how it goes. But shoulders, um, as you guys know, I dedicate an entire training day just mostly focus on shoulders because they can take a lot of volume and I train them at least twice a week on their own because I think it is essential for an aesthetic physique with building that taper. So the wider the shoulders, the better. Building that superhero bod that everyone wants. Okay, so I asked you guys to ask me some questions. I'll probably be answering in between my sets. I'm gonna try to answer questions that I haven't answered before because a lot of them can be pretty general. I like the weather today. Oh, weather is nice. Overcast, no wind at all. No snow. No snow. But yeah, we'll talk more about the bulk during the workout. So for this shoulder workout, we'll be doing three superset exercises. So then that's gonna be six exercises total. So for the first superset exercise, we're gonna do behind the head overhead press, superset with lateral raises. So we're gonna work our way up. You just have a really good warm up for when you go behind the head. Start with the 50s, and we're gonna work our way up to the heaviest that these barbells go to, which is 110. And we'll be doing it with the lateral, so. So, yep, wearing this Jet North, uh, my favorite Jet North tracksuit. This is a maroon color. And it's got a full zipper. I feel like that's pretty rare these days, a full zipper yeah. jacket. Matching with the maroon blazers. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, Coach Jason for 15% off, Jet North. A lot of people talk about how behind the head isn't very good for your shoulders, for your shoulder joints. But as long as you're not feeling any pain when you do it, then you're actually good to go. I prefer behind the head when you want it to get more lateral. Because when you go in front, you're going to get more front delt and chest, upper chest. Which is totally fine. You can go heavier with those too, but you can't really go as heavy behind the head. But it does target more of that lateral delt, which I'm just trying to get to add to that width. Just make sure you can control the weight and don't go crazy with it, you know, and you should be good. So we're going 10 and 10, 10 reps behind the head, 10 lateral. And we're gonna go ahead and go up and wait, jump on up to the 80s. First question, uh, skincare routine. I've tried a lot of different skincare products and the ones that have worked best for me are the ones that have uh, benzoyl peroxide, I think is what it's called. I'm pretty sure that's the ingredient, or whatever. <laughs> or what is it called? Nobody that says an ingredient, right? Yeah, benzoyl peroxide. I use penoxyl. So this is like the face wash where you use water. It's worked the best for me. So if you have any acne, body acne, you can use like a scrubber and get behind your back with it, or if your face, if you have face acne, use penoxyl. And then if you want to do like spot treatment then tretinoin is the best. It has different levels of strength. But you have to get a prescription for it. So, but yeah, tretinoin, panoxyl. I got okay skin. I don't have the best skin. I get acne, but I don't have the worst. It's not terrible. It's in between. I was thinking diet's huge, bro. Diet so too, that yeah. are complaining about their acne have a crap diet. That's, yeah, diet definitely makes a big difference. Hormonal mm -hmm. acne usually is around the chin. And that usually is associated with diet. Yeah. For me, it's with a lot of dairy. Yeah. So I try to avoid dairy as much as I can. But it just depends. Like a lot of oily foods, you're not going to do too well with your skin. A lot of you ask what my split is, my workout split. I guess you can call it the bro split, which is like kind of training specific muscle groups. So it's not push pull legs. It's like chest on its own, back on its own, shoulders, thighs, tries, and then legs on their own. So that's usually my daily split. Sometimes I do back and bice together, but I prefer to have my own day for bice and tries. It all just kind of depends. But I like to dedicate the entire training day for shoulders, the entire day for chest, and the entire day for back. First of all, I like to go to the gym, so I can go to the gym more often. Yep. And I usually just do like one rest day per week. Another question is what supplements do I take? I recommend three. 
first one, which we just mentioned, is pre-workout. Um, so I think you know if you can make, if there's some way to make your workouts better, pre-workout is one of those best ways to help you focus, get really good pumps and everything. So I like pre-workout, creatine, and mm, whey protein. Yeah. Yeah. Those three. Everything else is kind of, like, to be honest, a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. They're not really going to do much. I've seen enough progress with creatine to think it's worth the, the price. Yeah. I get it for free, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, I've seen the most progress with, with creatine out of anything. I was going to ask you, because you're a professional, um, yeah. <laughs> on arm day, do you typically like doing buy, try, buy, try, buy, try, or do you just blow up the buys and then blow the tries? Blow up the buys and then do tries, okay. yeah. Okay. Because I, I like thinking. to keep the pump like... You know, yeah, you don't want to lose out. the pump from like switching to try and then switch yeah. back to buy. Or yeah, just like focus completely just on one, and just annihilate that, and then just move on to triceps. We're gonna do a cable lateral raise, and we're gonna superset it with a dump, or a barbell upright row. So, with this one, you're gonna grab the opposite side. So I like to grab the cable itself as a handle, so in that way you can keep your hand. So you want to kind of use your pinky as an indicator of how much delt you're getting. The more outside your pinky is, the more lateral delt you're gonna get. Because then when you rotate it out this way, you're going to get more anterior delt, which is this area here. So you want to make sure your pinkies are out during this exercise. general questions that everyone asks. Um, age, I'm 26, my birthday is July 12th. Height, 5'8". Uh, been training for 10 years, started at age 16. Where am I from? Utah. Been going to this, this gym like four years. Performance 24-7. I like 24-7 gyms. You can train on the holidays. You can train like longer on the, like a lot of gyms close early on the weekends. So you can train like late night sessions like on the weekend. So another good question is how to gain a following on social media, specifically Instagram. Right now I'm about 552,000. This year alone gained 300,000 followers. So the main thing, number one, is to post daily if you can. Um, so first you have to enjoy what you're doing. So if you're already in the gym every day and you're taking pictures, posting something is better than nothing, right? Because the more content you get out, the more of an audience is gonna it's gonna reach. So then they'll give you a follow. Post stuff that is like interesting and unique. Because the fitness world is oversaturated. We won't like I can't believe how many fitness accounts there are. So if you want to be different, you have to be unique and be yourself. I started out posting a combination of flips. If you scroll down further in my account, you'll see a lot of my flip content, like gymnastics and calisthenics. I still do post it occasionally. But I think that's kind of what set me apart to begin with. So I got you know, a combination of fitness content, gymnastics, flips. Right now it's more focused on fitness because I already built a following. And for me, being lean year round helps a lot too because I have abs. People love following people who know how to have abs. So it catches their attention on the Explore feed. But um, if you can get a good camera as well, that will set you apart. I have a Canon Rebel T8i, 
which is not as good as Jens's camera, yep. but it's a good starter camera. You just need to stop like caring what people think. You're gonna get a lot of haters no matter what. So just as long as you don't care what people think and just be yourself and have fun with it, then that's really the most important thing. Because even if you don't get any followers, at least you're doing it for yourself and you can use it as like a journal to see progress. Because I like to scroll down and like my first post and see how much progress I've made. And it's pretty self-motivating just because I don't want to digress and go back to where I was before. So it's a good way to track progress even if you don't get any followers. So we'll be going back and forth for this. I prefer to face the machine like this. The other side, kind of like the behind the head overhead press. If you face this direction, I find it a little bit more anterior and chest. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm focusing more on the lateral delt because I get plenty of this area from like bench pressing and chest day. This is going to be applied to like a cable overhead as well because they tend to be more on like a deep line. And then it does give you a better stretch at the bottom, so you can go all the way down and get a good stretch. Uh, run over to the cables. So what you're gonna do here is similar to the other one where you know we were doing the upright row. This is gonna be the same thing but bent over to get more rear delt. So a lot of a uh, very common question I get is how I'm able to maintain my abs year round. And to be honest, it is mostly genetics. People carry fat in different parts of their body depending on their genetics. So there's different fat distribution. I'm pretty lucky because I don't really carry much fat in my midsection um, based off my genetics. So the last place I would gain fat if I were to gain weight would be in my midsection, which is why I'm able to maintain my abs year round. So my legs don't look very lean compared to my midsection. Um, so that's honestly like the main reason. But I also maintain like a very clean diet throughout the year. I don't have a clean diet 100% of the time. You know, I still have cheat meals and stuff. But naturally I do have kind of a lower fat cell count. So kind of more of like an ectomorph body type, I guess you could call it. Um, which is more on the fast metabolism, lean side of things. Ectomorph with the percentage of mesomorph. It's genetics and then also the clean diet. And I do train my abs. I started at a young age doing gymnastics. So backflips in general, you have to use your core a lot for those. So that could be my foundation with how my abs look with their insertions. That's genetics, but the good obliques and everything like that and the 3D look comes from actually training your abs and developing them. Combination of training and then low body fat. Thanks for watching this point. We just did an entire shoulder workout. I said at the intro I was gonna do uh, I was gonna do triceps and abs too, but I think I think that was a good enough workout. I'm super hungry, so we're just gonna get out of here, probably get some Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you made it to this point, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about any other questions, because today was kind of more of a, a Q&A workout, ask in the comments. I'll be sure to answer any question you have. And uh, yeah, love you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.